Computer Science 460, Software Engineering 1. Uh, today's uh, topic is documentation, and this set of slides corresponds to Chapter 30 of the 10th edition of Somerville. Now, if you're looking in your text, you won't find Chapter 30 because it's not in the text, but it's in the uh, supplementary materials on Ian Somerville's website for the text. And uh, we are using Agile processes this year, so uh, there will be significantly less documentation than there was in years past. Uh, so we'll start with a little bit of motivation. This one is uh, entitled uh, Real Programmers. Uh, top thing says, Hi Randy, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can, you have to come back. Things are going real bad. Down at the office, uh, Ross is rewriting all your code. Integration's been broken for weeks. Please, please wake up, Randy. Come back. Now he's decided that he's a real programmer, and real programmers don't need to write documentation because the code is the documentation. But he realized that he doesn't understand his own code, let alone yours. So he's rewriting everything using function and variable names to explain exactly what they do. He's got simple for loop iterators with names over 100 characters. And you can see the uh, code uh, in the uh, screen at the uh, bottom. Uh, this function connects the handler to the interrupt signal and returns true in case of success. Int the signal we want to connect, int the detail of the signal we just mentioned, handler func, the function we want to connect, void star the data we want to pass to the function. <laughs> yeah, they're hundreds of characters long. Um, and in a lot of undisciplined teams, the programmers will insist that the code is the documentation. While an agile methodology will eschew excess documentation such as specification, there's still the need for end user documentation as well as commentary to describe how to maintain the code. How much comments, how detailed variable names, uh, it's a balance between not having any and having uh, too much. So with documentation, it's important to understand why we produce system documentation, even when agile methods are used for development. Um, understand that standards are important for documentation production and get introduced to the process of professional documentation production. Uh, yes, even agile methods are not enough to avoid producing documentation. I know that people will say the code is the documentation, but it's exceedingly difficult to understand code if it's not yours or if you've even been away from it for some time. Systems produce a large amount of documentation regardless of your intentions. How much documentation the type depends on the system. You know, is it safety critical? Is it something internal that's a just a tool to uh, assist with the process? They'll have different amounts of documentation. Uh, you can sometimes get help from a technical writer, but often you're stuck doing the uh, work yourself. So, different roles for documents. Uh, they act as a communication medium between development team members, uh, information repository for maintenance uh, team members, people who will be maintaining the system, information to help management plan the implementation of the system. They tell the users how to use and to, how to administer the system, and they help regulators certify that the system conforms to uh, certain behaviors if the system is subject to uh, regulation. So as you can see, documents take on several different roles, and no one really likes producing them, but a lot of times you have to have them. So two broad classifications. There's process documentation, which records the process of development and the maintenance. These are plans, schedules, process quality documents and product documentation, which describe the product being developed. These can be done from a system's viewpoint, for example, specification, or from a user's viewpoint, for example, a user manual or a quick reference guide. Uh, agile methods are very much against the process documentation. I have sympathy for this view, but sometimes it's really necessary. Remember that as an agile team, you need to be co-located, have the client on site, and have an explicit trust with the client. If you don't have all these things, you're going to need some form of process documentation to back yourself up in the case of a disagreement. So let's spend a little bit of time looking at this process documentation in detail. So process documentation categories, you have your plans, estimates, and schedules like we discussed in the last lecture, uh, particularly Gantt and PERT charts. Uh, these can be Kanban boards or burndown charts uh, in the case that you're uh, going uh, with a more agile development methodology. Uh, reports on how resources are being used. Uh, standards define how the process is implemented. Working papers, these are ideas or thoughts on designs. And emails, wikis, or message board uh, recording detail of everyday communication. So 
sometimes you need to have the emails to back up why certain decisions uh, were being made. Uh, even nowadays, instant messages uh, can be used to indicate why decisions were made the way they were. Uh, the problem with process documentation is it rapidly becomes out of date. Uh, you can reduce quite a bit of this um, if you have internal projects or very short, low-risk pro projects. Uh, you can reduce the amount of process documentation needed, and that's you know, where Agile comes in. For external clients, the amount uh, you can reduce depends on the contractual agreements, how detailed, how wordy is the contractual agreement, uh, the attitude toward contract risk, uh, your relationship with the client or product owner, and regulatory uh, requirements. So uh, process documentation a lot of times is a necessary evil even though we don't necessarily like it. In terms of uh, product documentation, well, where does it all come from? So it starts out, paperwork, where does it all come from? Damn, look at the paperwork projections for the next month. Damn. Where are we going to get enough paper to handle this paperwork? 100 forests must be chopped down. Ah, paperwork, where does it all come from? And this is uh, from a webcomic called My New Filing Technique is Unstoppable. And that's uh, quite an interesting comic made out of clip art from the 1990s, which uh, I enjoy for some reason. Um, so product documentation, this includes both user and system documentation. Uh, there are different types of users. One are the end users who use the system to perform tasks in support of line operations, and system administrators who manage the system for the end users. And you often need to produce documentation for both types of users. Who uses what? Uh, the functional specification, which uh, we probably won't be doing in this implementation of CS 461, uh, is used by managers and system evaluators. Installation documentation, this is used by system administrators. Where do all the files go? What are the executables? What uh, external dependencies do you need? Uh, any special things that need to be done with the operating system? That's all used by the system administrators. The introductory manual is used by the end users, and a more detailed reference user is used by experienced users. Reference manuals should describe the system facilities and their usages, uh, should provide a complete listing of error messages, and should describe how to recover from detected errors. Uh, in other words, it should be complete. In contrast, introductory manuals uh, provide an overview of how to use the system and don't always tell you what to do uh, in case something goes horribly awry. Other documentation, quick reference card, that's really handy for end users. Uh, keyboard templates are not as common anymore, but they would overlay the keyboard and tell you what the different function keys did. And then online help, and that's really good when it's up to date. Um, it's not always easy to browse and is often feature oriented. Uh, the online help for uh, Microsoft Office is is a good example of documentation that's not terribly easy to browse or find what you're looking for. I've often found that it's easier to use Google or Bing to locate how to do something with Office rather than the uh, associated help. Systems documentation describes the design implementation testing of the system. This includes the requirement document, functional specification, your program source code, validation documents, that is uh, testing guides, and system maintenance guides. So, see, at some point the code is the documentation. However, it should not be the only source of documentation. We will be issuing a lot of this documentation during this year's edition of the software engineering class, but some of the system documentation is still going to be necessary. Uh, document quality. Uh, it basically uh, is required uh, for um, making sure the system conforms to a certain quality standard, and good quality documentation requires management support. Uh, for example, it's helpful to have a dedicated uh, technical writer, but it's not always the case. Uh, and because there's not often management support, uh, most system documentation is badly written, difficult to understand, out of date, and incomplete. So document structure is important for readability, and well-structured documents enable readers to quickly find information. Uh, the IEEE standard for user documentation is helpful, and I feel that for $94, it should be helpful. Uh, so here's the uh, free version, uh, and this is what Somerville has to say. Um, the components you should have are identification data, 
table of contents, uh, list of illustrations, introduction, information uh, for the use of the documentation, concept of operations, procedures, information on the commands, error messages and problem resolution, a glossary related information sources, navigational features, an index which is always handy, and search capability uh, if you have electronic documentation. IEEE says the document should be provided in medium formats so that allow its use by those with vision, hearing, or other physical limitations. A description of how to print the electronic documentation should be included in both the electronic and the printed documentation. Uh, unfortunately, with like a lot of web stuff, uh, it doesn't print very well to uh, paper in case you need a paper version. And documentation prov should provide text cues uh, rather than using colors such as uh, green or red. It should be cues, not cures. Warnings, cautions, and notes shall be displayed in a consistent format as, that is readily distinguishable from ordinary text or instructional steps. Uh, documentation uh, formats for use entered commands or codes shall clearly distinguish between literals and variables. So um, that's definitely important. Um, and minimal structuring guidelines, uh, all documents should have a cover page. Longer than a few pages should be divided into chapters and sections. If there's a lot of detailed information, you should have an index so that people can find uh, what they're looking for without having to read the whole document. And if it's intended for a wide variety of people, not just, you know, like a system administrator or end user, then it's helpful to have a glossary. Uh, for writing style, and I'll hit on these things as we uh, grade your assignments, um, the writing style should use active rather than passive voice. Um, use grammatically con correct constructs and correct spelling. Uh, avoid long sentences that present several different facts. You know, keep sentences short and crisp. Uh, and usually an active voice, subject, verb, object. Keep paragraphs short and have a topic sentence for them. And don't be overly uh, verbose. Be precise and define the terms you'll use. And if the description's complex, repeat yourself in a slightly different manner, but not too much. Uh, make use of headings and subheadings. Itemize facts whenever possible. And do not refer to information by reference number alone. And I think there can be exceptions for this in academic documents, particularly IEEE uh, writing style. If you're submitting something for an IEEE conference, um, you can um, use uh, numbers for the uh, reference number, although uh, the APA style will have the author in the year. And it's good to have standards for the structure of the document itself, regardless of what those standards are. Um, basically, you know, how is the document identified, uh, the presentation, and the update number. And then the interchange of the document, what is the electronic format that it's going to be in? You know, PDF, uh, Microsoft Word, uh, Doc, uh, basically having some type of uh, standard. And this is the software documentation process from Somerville. Uh, in the industrial projects I've worked on, the process tends to be a little bit looser. For example, uh, we tend not to print as many copies as we did in the past, and there's typically not a you know final draft followed by a check of the final draft or a proofread of the text uh, prior to that. Uh, so this is a very idealized uh, process. For online documentation, it's similar to help. Uh, the positives is it's accessible, usually updated on a regular basis. Negatives, it can be hard to browse or, you know, just read casually. And it's easy to get lost in, uh, you know, sublinks. Um, readers such as Kindle and the iPad make it easier to read the electronic te text, but uh, they're not as easy as uh, paper. And uh, finally, a word about LaTeX. Uh, LaTeX is great for document layout. It's best at handling mathematics and formulas. Um, in software engineering, I would definitely use it if you're making a project that will use formal methods or a safety critical system. Uh, downside to LaTeX is it's not WYSIWYG. That means it's not what you see is what you get. And it can be pretty difficult to work with uh, figures, but it's a valuable tool for large documents that need certain types of structure and makes it easy to uh, reference other uh, sections of the text.
So next time we'll have a project day and then we'll get back into more of the uh, information from the summer. Building.